Okay, picking up our study in the Ten Commandments, we're at number eight, Thou shalt not steal. And before I read that, that's James chapter 4, verse 17. Let's put you under guilt and condemnation already. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And the question comes out, is it okay to steal? And one of the things is, you know, this company makes X amount of dollars. They'll never miss it. And hopefully by the end of this study, you'll see what the answer is. And if you continue to do what the Bible says thou shalt not do, then you sin. And I'm reminded of this morning, I was at the courthouse. And doing some paperwork in there, and a woman handed me the pen to fill out some paperwork, and I almost put the pen in my pocket. And I'm very bad for that. And not even, you know, I knew today was the Ten Commandments study. I didn't know which commandment was coming up. And I thought in my heart, you know, I can't steal it. That's a poor testimony. Thou shalt not steal a. Why should we go any further? Isn't that enough? Man looks for loopholes. Man wants to get around God. Man will tie religion because religion says through tradition, I can do what God says you can't. So by religion, when I get to heaven, I'm innocent. I paid a man off. And how wrong we be. Exodus 20. Exodus 20. And there's not many verses to look up in this one because it's Exodus 20. Exodus 20 verse 15. Okay. Exodus 20 verse 15. Yes, written to Israel. We'll look at that in a moment. Thou shalt not steal. It doesn't say thou shalt maybe steal, thou shalt not steal, uh, but you know, when it, when a company makes X amount of dollars, they'll never miss it. Thou shalt not steal, but uh, you know, accidentally. Thou shalt not steal. Well, you know, the money value of the of the thing being stolen, that, that has, you know, God's not going to condemn me for taking a paperclip. And yet, I myself and my first wife that worked at a defense contractor, we would ask permission from our bosses if we needed something out of the office. My wife would make photocopies. She asked her boss, say, listen, can I make photocopies? And the only discretion was, you make them at lunch. And yes, you can. There were things when I worked for the for the newspaper. Can I borrow this and bring it, you know, home and I'll bring it back? Or hey, you know, can I get some extra newspapers because you know someone's name's in it? And I would get an answer. And if, and if I didn't ask, and if I just took something without permission that was not mine, that's classification of stealing. When you take something without permission, you didn't ask, you took. And I'm even going to, uh, I am even going to put down on the frame, well, oh, I'll ask them, they're not here, I'll ask them later. Did you get permission? No. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm not going to give you a loophole. And listen, I'm not just preaching to people out there. I'm preaching to myself. I have pens. You don't want me with a pen. I will bring it. I will take that pen home. Unknowingly. And we've seen through the Ten Commandments so far, eight of them. Not only doing, listen, when we, when we did the adultery, God said, if thou shalt look upon a woman to, to, to lust after her in your heart, you've already committed adultery. Thinking is just as much as a sin as doing. 
Thinking and doing are both verbs. And when we come to thou shalt not steal. Okay, when we did thou shalt not kill, and we had to look at, well, there's a definition of the word murder, and there's a definition of killing and wartime. We had, you know, we had to look into that study. Killing had not loopholes, but it has different def definitions. Where God would tell Israel, go in there and kill them all. But when we come to verse 15, thou shalt not steal, there is nothing that can be left unstated that's already been stated by one, two, three, four words. Deuteronomy 5, 19. Israel is about to go in the land. Deuteronomy is written to the children of Israel that are going to go into the land. Exodus 20 is written to the pe people who are going to go through the wilderness on the way to the land. Deuteronomy 5, I think I said 15, 5, 19. The children of Israel go into the land. Neither shalt thou steal. Thou shalt not steal, neither shalt thou steal. In conclusion, else what has been written and what is going to be written in the book of Deuteronomy, the laws and regulations, neither shall you steal. God above all, don't use his name in vain, for the Israelite, the Sabbath, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit, neither else too. You cannot nitpick, oh, I'm not going to commit adultery if I'm going to steal. Well, you know, I'm not going to steal, but I choose not to honor my parents. That's not how that's not how the law is read. It's not nick and pick, choose what you want. You don't get five commandments for a dollar. It's all ten. Together. And if you're guilty of one, you're guilty of them all. Adultery is a big, wicked, vile. It, it's a big, it's a big, wicked, vile. A, 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 a sin, yes it is. So is murder. Murder, oh, you're taking somebody's life, you, you, you kill somebody. So is taking the Lord's name in vain. Now somebody may not think, well, you know, I GD'd or, or Jesus Christ in the form of cousin. That's not bad as murder. Oh, yes it is, because it's in the same list. With stealing. All right, let's take our Bible to Romans 13, 9. Romans 13, 9. And I think thou shalt not steal is one of the three sins that every human being is committed if they live to be the age of 10. You say, what do you mean? Every child has taken a cookie that they weren't supposed to. Every child has taken a piece of candy. Every child has taken a nickel or a quarter or even vast amount of dollars from their parents' uh, coin jar or purse. Every child has stolen something. Every child has not honored their parents like they should. We get angry with our parents and we sin. Our parents, my parents corrected me, thankfully, praise God. I would be in their room, oh, I wish they, you know, wish I had other parents. I always didn't give them the love that I that were due them and the honor that was due. That's a sin. And then one would be coming up soon would be the false witness. We have all lied. You ask a child, did you do this? No. Listen. My brother lived lived with my grandparents, so I was, you know, I had a brother, but I was a child that lived in my parents' house alone. And my mother would come to me and say, did you do this? And I lie. Like that phantom ghost, not me. You know, it's a little harder, you know, we got other children in the house, but we lie to get out of trouble. Youngsters, children. We get, we get, we lie to get out of trouble as adults. Stealing is just as much as lying is not honoring your parents. 
Oh, you know, I take care of my parents. I took care of my parents at old age, and, and I loved them. And I called them every house. That's great and wonderful. Glory to God. Have you stolen anything? Well, yeah. To him that knoweth to do it good and doeth not to him is is a sin. I think. Wait a minute. Stay there in Romans. I don't know if we're gonna find this one real quick. Um, James. The other one James says, if we're guilty of one, we're guilty of all. Let me see. I don't think I'm going to be able to find that one. Here we go. James 2.10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. All right. I've never used God's name in vain. Good. Well, we're not under the Sabbath, so uh, I've kept God first in my life. That's good. My parents, I love them. Good. How are you doing on stealing? Well, well, Romans 13, 9. You're guilty of all ten. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. That's written to Romans, that's written to Gentiles, that's written to the church. That's written to Christians. Thou shalt not steal is not only written to Israel, it's written to the church. Christian, you're not to steal. I've told you. Now, who, him that knoweth do good and doeth it not to him in his sin. You know it's good. You know it's, it's not good to, to steal. You steal, you are now guilty of being a thief. And even Jesus Christ died between two thieves. One unrepentant and one repentant. Of all the crucifixions that happened in Rome, Jesus Christ died on the day between two thieves. Isn't that interesting? Matthew 19. You see what I do is. I train Christians to grow in the Lord. Wherever you are from milk or, 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 or bread or baby food. Wherever you are. I want you to grow more. But also when I teach the Bible and you hear these messages. I also make you without excuse before God. Now, you watch this video, you listen to this video somewhere, somehow, and God will have you to listen to it, and, and you get to heaven and say, well, Lord, I really didn't know about, I, I didn't know that was stealing. Uh, Brother Stiley, your pastor, in the Bible, it says, and you heard the message about stealing. And God doesn't want to hear, well, they're a big major company. Listen, when I grew up, the major theft, and people wouldn't think this is a theft, but let me say it. It is. You need to repent. Is we had something called a payphone. And it was great to walk up to a payphone that you didn't have, put your money in that, in that, in that kind of thing. Your fingers moved the door where the coin was, and you took your finger, you went along, and sometimes you got a dime. Sometimes you got more than one dime. Sometimes you got a quarter. Sometimes you got more than a quarter. And when you come to think about it, that is not your money. And you walked off with it. And the finders, keepers, loser, weepers is not biblical. And the law said, if you find something that, that belongs to somebody else, you're to go out and find that person. Or you're to hold that until the person comes. Hey, listen, did you find a quarter in that, in that payphone? Yeah, that's my quarter. I, I, I walked away. I forgot. You're to give it up. Taking money from the pay phones. And the biggest excuse was, and I think I actually did this twice in my life. You would mail the money, you would mail the coin back to the, uh, the phone company and say, listen, I found this in the in the phone book. And you would get a letter back saying, Thank you very much. Oh, you know, the telephone company is a big major company. That's not the point. That was not your dime, that was not your quarter. But whatever you found in that in that coin slot was not yours. 
I'm glad that's all under the blood. So Matthew 19, 18. And he says unto the witch, and Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. God told Moses, write upon the stones that God wrote, thou shalt not steal. Paul addresses the church of Christians, thou shalt not steal. We are in the gospel age. We are living with Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh. I believe. I believe there's the Old Testament. Okay? I believe studying the Old Testament. I believe in reading the New Testament. There are examples, Paul said. I believe there's a New Testament. I believe on this side of Calvary, a man between now and the rapture is, is, is saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the death, burial, and resurrection, according to the scriptures, Jesus is saved. I mean, a Christian is saved by Jesus' finished work. I believe in the Old Testament, they're saved by works. The New, <coughs> the New Testament, <coughs> excuse me, they're saved by the grace and the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. And then there's the tribulation period. And then there's the millennial kingdom. I believe the Gospels, the life of Jesus Christ, from his ministry to his death, I believe it's, a, it's another period of time. I mean, men were not saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. He's not dead. He hasn't been buried. He hasn't been resurrected. And as far as the law, Jesus says, I came to fulfill the law. Jesus said the law was unto John. So in the Old Testament, under the law, thou shalt not kill. In the church age, thou shalt not steal. In the time of the life of Jesus Christ, it says thou shalt not steal. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, it shall be established. We've got two or three witnesses. Ephesians 4.28. Some of you may have turned this all. Oh, you, know, you heard part of it. You know what the subject's about. Ephesians 4.28. Thou shalt not steal. What does Paul say to Christians in Ephesus? Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that need it. Paul says, you've stolen something? Don't do it no more. Thou shalt not steal. Get a job and then help somebody who can't make it out. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Neither shalt thou steal. Don't steal no more. How simple. And to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. This is a simple one. John 12, 6. John 12, 6. I mean, this ranks right up to A, B, C's. John 12, 6. The complications come with when you want to steal. And this, he said, not that he cared for the poor, this is Judas, but because he held, because he was a thief and had the bag and bared what was therein. Here is the treasurer of Jesus Christ. <laughs> the head of the church. He's got 12 men in the assembly. One of them is not only the devil, but that devil, the one that the devil came in, he's a thief. Jesus had a thief in his midst that was in charge of the money. Judas, we need some money to prepare for the Passover. He'd go in the bag and take it out. There are thieves in congregation of churches. There was a thief in the congregation of Jesus' disciples. I've been in churches where things have been stolen out of people's purses, out of the refrigerators, out of cars. 
by Christians. Christians will and do sin by stealing. Paul said to him that has stole, steal no more. Stop it. There's nothing wrong with asking. The worst thing they can say is no. Exodus 22. Exodus 22. Exodus. <coughs> Excuse me. Exodus 22. 1. In the Old Testament, Israel. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it. Or sell it. He shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. In the Bible, if a thief is caught, he has to make restitution and interest. You know what the law says? It says that an Israelite cannot charge interest to another Israelite. Usage. 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 It's forbidden. By the law, by God, to the Jews say, all right, you want to borrow 10 bucks? I'm going to charge you 1%. That is forbidden. Now, a Jew could charge interest to a Gentile, a stranger. But here's a man has stolen something, and God says, okay, interest. You know, you know what's lacking in America judicial system is a thief gets caught and he goes to a place where he gets clothing, gets air conditioning, gets heat, gets food, gets medical attention, gets room and board, gets no problems, no anything like that. And then when he gets out and serves his time, he has no retribution to the people that he's stolen from. Same chapter, verse 12. And if it be stolen from him, he shall make make restitution unto the owner thereof. All right? I wonder how many pens I owe to people. You say, well, that's not a big deal. Uh, I don't know how many pens I've stolen in my life. How many quarters, I mean, how many dimes and quarters did I steal out of phone booths? It's under the blood, but let me tell you, I used to shoplift as a child. I hate to admit that, but how much do I owe back? And there was a couple times I actually brought the merchandise back and, and, and left it on the shelf and walked away. That wasn't good enough. According to what we a guy, you know, was it four, four sheep for one sheep? I owed more than what I stole. I wonder how salesmen, not just used cars, I wonder how much salesmen have lied and stolen from people. Lying would be coming up next. How much the government has stolen from its people and not paid back? That's a crime. It is a violation of sin, a violation in the Bible that God says, you owe more. Than what you've taken. Leviticus 19.11. You stole a cookie? You owe a whole box of cookies. Now I don't know what, what God has set the standard for cookies or, or candy. But. Apology does not, doesn't make it. You got to make it right. You're harsh. Well, I'm going by the Bible. And I'm guilty of stealing. All 
Are we not, when we do something wrong to a Christian or unsaved person, are we not supposed to go and make make amends with them? Are we not to make it right? Are we not to make recompense for that? We we'll also do that with for stealing. 1911. Ye shall not steal. Do you need it more clear? Oh, I gotta get me a modern Bible. It is right there in the King James Bible in the in the Elizabethan language that says, "Don't steal." How's that? Proverbs thirty verse nine. Proverbs thirty verse nine. Now this is verse seven, eight, and nine is a life prayer that I have. Now, I know I'm not supposed to read prayers. I know I'm not supposed to have a prayer book as far as reading and saying vain words, but I don't think this is vain. And I don't go, you know, probably say, God, two things. Right. No, I, I will pray these two prayers. Because I don't want this to happen to me in my life. Two things I require thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. We'll deal with lies later. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. And God has answered those two prayers. I'm not rich. And I sure ain't poor. But I've got cabinets and refrigerators and a freezer filled with food. To the glory and praise of God and no other. Least I be full, I have too much, I am rich, and deny thee, and say, who is the Lord? I get so mighty in riches and goods and, and that that I'm gonna tear everything down and I'm gonna I'm gonna build the bigger and greater bar barns and flesh and soul, have rest, eat, drink, be merry, and God says, Thou fool. That's a good prayer. That's a good prayer every Christian should pray. God, I don't want too much or I will deny thee. Next. Least I be poor. On the other spectrum. And steal and take the name of my God in vain. Look at that. All right. I don't have enough to make a living. I go out and steal to make a living. What was the commandment? Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. What does it say there? Steal and take the name of my God in vain. When you steal, you have also violated the commandment, thou shalt not, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Look at that. You have taken God's name as a Christian vain when you steal. They know who you are and they know what you did. And, and oh, oh, the, 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 the pastor ran off with the piano player. And you have stolen things. And what? You've taken God's name in vain. All right. The, the pastor ran off the piano player. The piano player that ran off with whoever. That thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, they're guilty. They have covered their, their, their husband's wife or whatever it be. They're guilty of coveting. If you have stolen, you are guilty of thou shalt not steal. And you are guilty of taking the Lord's name in vain. You got two strikes against you. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all, unright uh, all unrighteousness. We also have to make an amends. I am not happy to say, but I stole money from my dad often. The day I got saved, I wrote my dad a letter telling him, "Listen, I'm sorry. Uh, you got to believe in the Lord Jesus." I witnessed to my dad. I said, "Dad." And he knew it, but I said, if you didn't know, but I want you to know I stole money from you. And this is how I did it. This is where I did it. And I don't know how much I did. But if you tell me how much I owe you, this is all written down in letter, probably in glory. God keeps great record. I will pay you back what I have stolen from you. Now, my dad wrote back to me and said, listen, no, I forgive you. Now, you've been forgiven of the debt. 
as also Jesus told us in the, in the gospel, you've been forgiven that debt. Okay, you don't owe it. You did what you could. And praise God, the, the person, uh, you know, I love you, whatever. You don't have to pay back. But when you steal, you are also violating taking the Lord's name in vain. We've already done that one. And you're going to find that when you break one commandment, you break in two. You've broken three. So when I steal, I am telling God, you're not, you're not able to take care of me. So I violated the first commandment too now. Why? I didn't put God first. God, listen, I, I'm starving. I, 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 I need help. God, don't. Please help me that I don't go steal. That was faith. That was faith. So thou hast taken the name, God's name in vain. You, you not put God first. And when you steal, we haven't got to it. That's the last commandment. You're coveting. You're looking at that item and saying, oh, I want it. That's the third commandment you've broken. And we haven't done that one yet. So thou shalt not steal. Okay, I've stolen something. Thou shalt not steal. Taking the Lord's name in vain. You coveted it. Coveted it. And you not put God first. That's four commandments you broke just by doing one commandment. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Sins. You broke more than just one commandment when you stolen something. Jeremiah 23. I know you didn't want to hear that one. I know you didn't want to hear that one. That paper clip, that pencil, that dime. You say, what about, I, I find a $5, $5 in the parking lot. What's the Bible say? You're going to go find that owner. And, okay, I spent the $5. Somebody comes up and says, hey, listen, I, I saw that you were in the parking lot the other day. You were in this front of this store, you know, the second alley. And, you know, I lost $5 in that area. Did you find $5? You are obligated. If you can prove that that was his money, you're obligated to give him that $5. I spent it. You give him other $5. That's kind of harsh preaching, styling, Isn't it? Would we rather just throw the Bible out? Would we rather tell God we don't care what you say, but I'm a King James Bible believing Christian. I just don't want to do what the Bible says. I don't want to confess. I don't want the truth. Verse 30, Jeremiah 23, 30. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Oh, stealing God's word. Every modern version on the market has stolen God's King James Bible for their copyrighted material that you have to pay them to use their copyrighted material and the King James Bible is free. And they make a, a, a profit. I don't mean a guy that tells the future. They make a profit by God's word from the pulpit, cash, check, or money order. Give me $100 and I'll get every prayer answered for you. Give me $1,000 and I'll give you a prayer hanky from, from Ephesus. Give, 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 give. And when you're done giving, give more. And that is stealing. And yes, it happens in churches. Not the good Bible believing churches that love the Lord and honor the Lord and, and gather the word of God as the word of God. No, they, they got bills to pay. Pastor needs a living. But I'm talking about churches that go out there and promise you everything and don't give you nothing. And you pay for it. And they twist and twang and, and, and uh, pervert the word of God. That's stealing. When you take the word of God and you make a profit out of it. For a profit. Not for extorting, not, not for rebuking, not for reproving, not for the growth of the Christians and salvation. But you just take the word of God and you use it for your own glory, your own love, your own cares. You are a thief. 
And you definitely taken the name of the Lord in vain. And you definitely did not put God first. And you definitely covered the people's finances. Shall I go on? Or shall I shut up? Genesis 31. <coughs> Genesis 31. Genesis 31. You know, people say, I don't have love. I love you by doing these videos and for you to grow. Genesis 31, 19. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Verse 20. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban. Jacob is married to Rachel. Rachel is his wife. They're getting ready to leave. Rachel goes and steals her father's gods. I don't know where Jacob is. Jacob's not there. But Rachel steals. Jacob is charged by the Holy Spirit. Genesis 31, 20. You believe the Bible is the word of God. You believe it's inspired by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said Jacob stole it unaware. You got to realize. Wives, when you steal something, God is charging it to your husband. Even if he doesn't have any idea, it is your husband's responsibility to take care of you, wife. And it is his responsibility to be in charge of his family. It goes God, Jesus Christ, the husband, the wife, and the children, Ephesians, Ephesians or Colossians. And when you do something, wife, that goes against the scriptures, your husband is also at blame. Jezebel went and took her husband's stamp, signed his name to Naboth's death warrant, and God told Elijah, go, go to Ahab and tell him, why hast thou killed? And Ahab didn't kill, Jezebel did, but Jezebel is Ahab's honey pie. Which gave Israel great tooth decay. Husbands, you need to realize what your wife does and do. God is going to hold you accountable as much as, as a husband does something good. Husband goes out witnessing. And his wife can't because she's got to take care of the house, the children, whatever. David says they that tarry by the stuff is also going to be a reward. Your wife gets a reward for but you going out when she can't and winning souls and whatever happens, she gets a reward. But when she does something wrong, honey, by husband, Jacob stole unawares. I think a husband every once in a while is going to pull a wife to the side and say, what sins are you involved in? How do we get them right? How do we make it right? And let's confess now together on our knees. Oh, that'll get the wife nice and angry. You know what kind of trouble this this spans for Rachel, Rachel and Jacob? Verse 30. And how though you were what is need be gone, because thou sore longest for thy father's house, yet therefore thou hast stolen my gods. They just weren't pictures. Gods can be stolen. And the typical Baptist church has stolen the gods. The Baptist church will bring Christmas trees in. That's the work of heathen. The Baptist church will bring in the Estar religion and her eggs. That is stealing from Paganism. And there are things that the Baptist church is doing throughout the whole world that has been stolen by the Catholic church, by this church, and by the heathen practices of Babylon and Egypt, which the Bible is, the Bible, God told the, uh, the Israelites, do not go back to Egypt. And yet the church has brought Egypt into the, into the church. You have stolen the gods of the world and the devil. 
and you've taken the Lord's name in vain, and you have coveted, and you have sure not put God first. There are churches in the world, Baptists, who has violated thou shalt not steal, the gods of the world. Look what Jacob says, verse 32. With, whoso, with whosoever thou findest thy God, and he didn't know it was Rachel, let him not live. Capital punishment. You find the one that stole your God, Laban, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stone him. Adam and Eve stole something from God, and we got death. Adam and Eve stole the fruit that God said, Thou shalt not eat of it, and the wages of sin is death. That fruit, Eve stole from the tree that God said, don't eat. One more place. 2 Samuel 15. I just hit your church, didn't I? No. That's the Bible hit your church, not me. And on this manner did Absalom type of antichrist to all Israel that came to the king for judgment Absalom stole the hearts of the men in Israel there has been people who have stolen or let me say split a church for their own deeds there is somebody out there who has stolen the heart of somebody for their own good And that's just as wicked as stealing a dime from the pay from. All theft is theft. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Thou shalt not steal. I'm not going to give you a loophole. 